God of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, what great privileges, what great opportunity this ordinary believer has with extraordinary power of all time it can hardly be estimated by the person who really doesn't value the things. We the human beings created, however, designed by Lord, given the accurate hands and accurate legs, accurate fingers to hold the things and do the works of Christ, so that how difficult it would have been for a person if, it, if his both hands have been amputated. He has all the reasoning well. He has all the intelligence with the common man. But he doesn't have the both hands if it has been cut at the forearm. Those two hands, and he has to struggle his entire life asking a man to be helped about his eating food, the other necessary things of the daily activities. How much tough time it would have been for him through his entire life, taking the help of his wife or his children, constantly with patience, they need to attend him. And this man being so much clever enough, how he would serve the life, how he would lead his life, is really for us a great lesson to learn from him. As it is a difficult for a paralytic person to come back to normalcy, so that he can once again get back to that same life what he was leading earlier, is also a great lesson that we learn from the Lord. Why we do see these examples, why we have learned a lesson from John chapter 9 when the blind man had come, so that the blindness of the Israelites might be reprimanded and made known for them that they do not have value for the truth. This exact same procedure for a man whose two hands have been amputated, a guy who had been paralyzed, paralytic. And the great example of the Bible, a blind man teaches them a lesson. But the Pharisees say, through you we need to learn, and they just threw him out of the Sanhedrin. The principle behind these three examples, what I want to tell, you will never really value your both hands and the fingers of your both hands working properly until and unless you get amputated. You will never really value the physical sound health which Lord gives to you to be orderly worshipping him, no matter how well Satan has its own chaotic form of vacancy, hindering you not to give the light, and trying to get around with its own strategy and stratagems. It is always our Lord who reigns forever and forever, as per our true earnest faithful relationship are our faithful fellowship with Lord to the praise of His glory in His grace. If we are not having an accurate fellowship with Him by rebound, not following any gimmicks or tricks or XYZ, but rather rebounding and getting back into the work of the Lord, till then Lord knows 
that these are the people who will not come out from the trap of Satan. Second Timothy 2.26, the great passage which concludes. Many theologians have varied commentaries, varied thoughts, varied viewpoints. Lord himself will set them snare for their own prejudiced mind, prejudiced dishonesty. Lord always trades upon truth. He always breathes upon truth. He judges you upon truth. His standards, his nature, his character, his doctrine absolutely revealed for us in the Bible is his truth. He cannot go against his truth, nor is a man to repent or change or lie. He is an absolute standard of a man that he preaches what it is exactly and he executes what it is demands. And when we are failing to hit that mark of the truth with no sincerity or loyalty or royalty or with a great humbleness, even the imagination or motivation behind your thought, Lord knows very well, dear brother, and said the Bible for us through King David for his beloved son Solomon. Even the motivation behind your thought, Lord knows it long back. Now, when we are going to the praise of His glory and His grace, how much more you and I ought to be, how much more you and I have to learn that the same God who has searched the hearts diligently, the same God who knows that man's heart is deceitful above all things, the same God who knows your G2 report more accurately, because of the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you. What it is that you can play or you can mock or you can tell to Lord that I am sowing this seed, but I will yield the fruit of that seed. You sow to the wind and you reap war wind and God is not mocked, dear brother. So as long as you fail to have that right and true fellowship with Jehovah, as long as you fail to have the trite and true work of the Lord with earnest zeal and desire in your heart, not for gain, not with grudging, but with love. Until then, you have a tough time in this church age. Until then, you have been put in a snare upon your own prejudiced mind, and Satan takes an absolute gain over you. Satan wants from a believer to do anything which the believer thinks satisfied for his morality, for his guilt consciousness. Satan wants to allure you from the word, obscure you from the truth. It wants to take away the word which has been sowed in your heart so that you should not be fruitful again. And it has its various strategies and tactics to easily obscure you from truth. It causes you to get depressed in your life because those pastors have not helped you to reach for your mission. It causes you to think that you are a man, but the people didn't recognize you that you are a man for God. But dear brethren, why you have been acting like a wearied man or a psychic. You know very well. Your facts are there with you. You may tell some or you may hide some. But with God, everything is naked. And why do you want to deceive your own life by telling lies to your fellow men, trying to gain sympathy, trying to gain this, trying to gain that? Why can't we treat each other with truth? Because you don't value the truth, so you do not fear that great Lord, so you tread upon lies. And you act to gain sympathy or apathy by gaining some of the things which are not at all right in the sight of law. And this is the ultima why the people fail to realize the principle of grace over judgment. Then to you act so varied, then to 
the people of Israelites were being judged so badly, Lord's hand was still stretched out. So that none should perish, but everyone should come to know what it is, the loving kindness and the mercy of Christ. We are still enjoying in that grace, but we are never aware what is that loving kindness and the mercy of Christ. We are still enjoying in that grace, but we are not able to understand that Lord deals with judgment only based upon truth. We are enjoying in that grace, but what is the result? Vain glory. And how long you want to sit around with your depression mind, rather than putting all your anxiety, all your worries, upon Christ who cares for you and Satan wants to short circuit you are every essence of word you are every essence of faith you are every essence of promise and doctrine that you have learned if faith is a simple one doctrine is a complex one Satan wants you to concentrate upon your worry Satan wants to Focus your attention apart from the word of the Lord and the present problem and try to divert your mind by short-circuiting what you will be learning from the word of the Lord. And Satan is very cunning. It is the master deceiver in everyone's life. It is such kind of a traitor, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. It will easily induce you into those emotional-based worship services. Christian programs, Christian activisms, running this race and that race, begging money which they have not been mentioned for tithes in the New Testament, and it will cause you to beg money because for your survival of the belly. When Lord could provide food through, Eli through crowd to Elijah, will he not provide the great things for us? What the lesson we learn? A still small voice. A still small voice, but a greater power than powerful atomic energy that could be really formed in the future technology as well. That still small voice is what, dear brethren, you and I need to hear. And that still small voice is the ministry of that God, the Holy Spirit in our lives to learn. A man who has been amputated, a man who is paralytic. And a man who has been depressed in his life, not having the truth, nor able to comprehend the power of faith, what Bible doctrine can do, the healing what he can get, or what they can get in their lives. The soundness is not there in you because you don't have truth in you, said the Bible for us long back. But dear brethren, the renovation of your thinking should be so much powerful as Lord tells to us. The moon should shine like the sun, and the sun should shine sevenfold, or seven times, or seven days of a sun together. That will be the appearance of Bible doctrine in your lives if you really know to believe, or you will be really wanting to know what is the power of the scripture. And what it is when Lord strikes, what is the result for your failure not to know the truth? As not Jeremiah records for us in Jeremiah 5 1, please know if there is any man, seek if there is any man among the midst of the periphery of this Jerusalem, that that man is always constantly doing and searching upon the truth. Or at least is doing my pleasure faithfully. And they could find any man. Our Lord says no, not even one. Since the duty of the pastor teacher is to communicate the word of the Lord effectively and accurately through the consistency of original exegesis of the subject, risagogical and categorical explanation over the word of dispensation with the dispensing technique. If this pastor teacher really takes the burden to really communicate the truth to the people, then we don't find such kind of an instances of paralysis or depression for the pastor. 
the lesson what we learn from an amputated man when his two hands are not there and how hard and how difficult it is for his to his entire life it is a great lesson that you and i need to understand dear brethren that how hard and how difficult it would be for this church age believer without the mentor ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this intensified stage of this angelic conflict. How hard it will be for us to understand or to enlighten in the scriptures without the mentor ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. How difficult it would be for us to call even that great Lord and Savior as Lord. Far less we think we can speculate the things about Trinity. We think we can create that man is a renovation. And man has been placed here because of that earlier creation was there with God. Because in John 1, 1 it says in the beginning was God and the God was with another God. Or in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. That Word is a God. That's what the people want to conclude. And they want to say that God, followed by the king of Tyre of Ezekiel chapter 28, that there was a creation and Lord took her on that creation and threw him off. And now he has made along with world who was there with God. And he has renovated this world again. And he has put one more man. And that original God is different and this God is different. And this is the theological explanation given by one of the pastors. When these morons do not even understand what it is to divide the word of the Lord dispensationally and dig the truth from the original languages of the scriptures, irrespective of their useless speculative theological reasonings, they want to conclude these subjects and they want to tell it to their hearers. And this hearing of the subject, what the hearers can hear from them, will not even suffice to grow up are not even able to make them to understand because what they're telling is lies and absolutely lightness lightness in the not in the sense not l i g h t or fortizo lightness which is doesn't have any weightage which doesn't have any reasoning to be taken properly when you look the word of the lord metamorphically or through the figure of speech or through the understanding of the subject through the gap theory of angelic conflict That is what they are always telling useless and lightness things. And this lightness and useless things is what absolutely happening around in the pulpits. And this man will never realize until and unless they have been amputated. And you know what is the amputation for a spiritual believer? Amputation is not to know the original isagogical, categorical, and exegetical word. Not to dig the word from the dispensations. And amputation is what we find today in the pulpits by Satan because it is alluring every pastor teacher not to know the truth. And obscure them from the truth. Not to dig the word. Not to understand what is the hermeneutical principle. And not to get back to understand what exactly the word of the Lord demands for us to be analyzed, to be told, to be considered. And that is what a very great, pathetic, sad condition we are surviving in this period of apostasy. And that is what the people are able to think. Not able to realize how hard it would be for an amputated man, physically amputated man, to survive his life. And not only the pastor teacher's responsibility are being infringed for the believers to know about this unique spiritual life, but rather they are amputing them both hands and legs not to know the truth. And every believer today in this unique dispensation of the church age is an amputated one from this unique spiritual life and the mystery doctrine what it has been given for us and the unique spiritual life which we have to execute through spiritual self-esteem and spiritual autonomy and by a spiritual maturity. When I have seen yesterday this man who has been physically amputated, I was observing the way that this guy was able to get along with his life activities. Today, each and every believer in Christ has been spiritually amputated. And each and every believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
for whom this doctrine has to be given. In the pews they have been made amputated and to sit so that they should not work with their own hands or with their own legs. Or they should not come to know what is the truth of the word of the Lord from the original languages of the scriptures. In fact, even when you could look back to the pulpit, the pastor teachers have become paralytic. And they have made themselves paralytic attacked because they are half dead. And the pulpits have been burrowing this great mystery doctrine of this church age. Far less they can teach them simple faith. Far less they can teach them complex doctrines. They themselves are not capable of understanding what is the truth that we have in Christ. They themselves are not able to comprehend what is the privilege for us to understand and rightly divide this word of truth. They themselves they are not able to comprehend and get back to the truth which Bible doctrine dogmatically claims for us to communicate, to communicate, to communicate. And why will not the pastors will become depressed as long as such kind of a morons who love to become amputated and who love to become paralytic to the doctrine of the church age. And these pastors, whether they're really depressed or they're acting, Lord knows their inner attitude. But we are here to caution them and tell to them again and again, the word of the Lord which tells to us very clearly and very accurately, Dear brethren, do not be mocked. Do not play gimmicks with the Lord. Not do your pastoral tricks of foolishness. Because we are dealing with His Word. We are dealing with His revealed mind. We are considering His great essence in communicating that truth. No man has seen God at any time. The Theophanies or the Christophanies, what the people will fail to understand the truth. Having XYZ attitudes, they think they have seen and they think they have communicated, they think they have listened, nor able to differentiate between the visions and the dreams. Now are able to look around what are the trances. In fact, even not able to understand the proper nomenclature of the theological terms which Bible uses for us. It has become a hard thing for them to unlearn what they have learned already. And never they will learn the truth. And do not worry, dear brethren. As long as they fail to communicate the word from the original language of the scriptures, the isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation over the dispensing technique of dispensations, till that time the believers who are there under his care, or the believers who are there under the care of a pastor teacher who does not teach you from the original Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic, need not worry, dear brethren, because do you know why? Your hands and legs have been spiritually amputated. And what great sense of extraordinary powers and privileges given to you, never you will realize. Never you will come to know. Nor you will divide the word of the Lord properly to tell the truth. To become an effective witnessing or to become an effective ambassador to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what a great privilege it is for us. You will realize this only when you wake up in heaven, what you have lost. At what you are paid, this morality of spiritual life which you think. And what you have to be yielded to Lord to become the winner believer in Christ. And the one who is acting, or the one who thinks they are really depressed, the one who thinks. Because the word of the Lord tells it is the word itself that shall reign forever and forever. And there is nothing else that shall reign forever and forever. And if you guys think we can get along without exegesis, then you need to correct that thought. If you guys think we can get along without isagogical and categorical explanation of the word, the way the Lord strikes to you, you will be both sick and you will be having a faint-heartedness in you.
because you will lose your fellowship with your people but not with God. Your heart will be fainted because for the fear of the softies. Your heart will be fainted because you will be losing the income which could be cut off. For that you will be faint-hearted. But you will be not brave-hearted to fight this Lord's battle with integrity belonging that it is Lord who fights through you to the praise of his glory in his grace. And that is what it is lacking today in the pulpits. And that is what it is happening around in the pulpits. Where the people which they have to honor God's word by properly rightly dividing the word of truth. The same people have become the people of great traitorship by wrongly dividing the word of truth. As this physical man will never realize how longing he would be to look upon those people who have that full hand and how effectively they are working their life. And only that man knows what is suffering. But every believer has been given equal privilege and opportunity not to become spiritually amputated. But to use rebound and get back to the knowledge of the Lord and grow up in Bible doctrine day by day and not involve in emotional based worship services. And that is what you and I need to think and correct once again in your life where you are. Before the Lord could despise and not smell the sweet smelling fragments from us. Because of which we have been created for Christ, let us correct ourselves. Our Lord had a great thought among those people, and he tells in the book of Amos, chapter 5, I despise them, and I'm not interested even to smell their Solomon assemblies. That should not be the fate of the church which Lord has governed through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If there is the fate, Lord will throw that to the reprobate minds. That's why we have been constantly warned under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that the doctrine that we are dealing is a spiritual phenomena. And this spiritual phenomena constantly demands the word of the Lord to be number one priority. This spiritual phenomena demands that we need to rightly divide the word of truth. This spiritual phenomena demands, above all, to be constantly used, rebound as the number one responsibility upon each and every believer's shoulders. And if this rebound is not been given, then there is no fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. And when there is no fellowship, you are grieving and squelching Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and lying to it. When you are squelching Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot discern what is right and false doctrine. When you are grieving your overall failure in this unique great spiritual life, and you will be sitting there with both amputated hands and legs, and the pastor, what he is doing without rebound and without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he himself being a teacher of morality and sheer arts of oratory, he has paralyzed the doctrine of this unique mystery realm of the spiritual life of the church age. And since he has been kept paralytic, he leads the people to be depressed. And why the people perish? Because there is no proper revolution from the original exegesis of the word. So who is the great doctor to heal them? Bible doctrine. It is not that no bomb in the Gilead so that the people can go and work out in other places. The bomb in the Gilead is a pastor teacher in your own church who has been given this bona fide gift of spiritual communication of this important communicational spiritual gift. And he uses this unique spiritual communicational leadership gift to make each and every believer perfect and complete in the knowledge of Christ. And he doesn't compromise there at any cost. Nor he will develop the very doctrines which they have against each and every opinions over Trinity, Resurrection, the Second Coming, or XYZ attitude. Some doctors end up with the point of cryonics, cloning, the genome technology, the present technology which the science has been leading through. 
and they tell that we have already been given a permanent life and we need not worry about Lord's second appearing. We need not worry about the millennium rule or the eschatological events. So wear it to the thoughts of Christ. The thinking which has nothing to be done with the thinking of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dear brethren. Like that, we have many pastors who are really infringed the doctrine of the pulpits. But if you really desire the truth, the best solution, if you could ask me, get down upon your knees and ask the Lord to direct you, a right man, when you are having a right fellowship with Him. It is Lord's duty to give you that information. It is Lord's work out, irrespective of a geographical location, to give you the truth. Why I want you to get on upon your knees, not as theoretical or hypocritical methods of methodology, because when they worship the Lord, the Lord Barak, which has been used in Jeremiah 4, 2, tells when Lord breathes or lives in truth, in judgment and in righteous, it automatically makes a believer to get on upon his knees to the praise of his glory, of his worship. And that Barak, which has been used in the Hebrew to worship that Lord, is a process of the future millennium as well, where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the Lord. And what great truth we do have, and what great power we have, you know it very well. And we cannot live the things just like that. So, dear brethren, either you want to make every believer amputated, or you want to paralytic the doctrine of, the speech, of this unique spiritual life among the mystery doctrine of the church. Or you want to cause the believers to be depressed by not revealing them the truth and not giving them that true spiritual enlightenment from the encouragement of the word of the Lord. Lord help you. But if you have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, I know you will never stop. You will never stop to proclaim the truth. Because when you have been faithfully prepared, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will use you and take those words which are absolutely faithful to Him, which are absolutely true to Him, and it will transform your thinking. Transform in the sense of not metaschematizoa, but metamorphomai. Your inner transformation, your inner renovation of your thinking, so that you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free, and you shall be freed from the infringement of this pastor's responsibility, and you shall be free from the amputation of your spiritual hands and spiritual legs. So which way, dear brethren, you want to go, you decide. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And whereas for the believers, the great mandate is grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, but prior to that, be controlled of the Spirit. Without the mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot even budge a single millimeter, far less you think you can have the edification complex of your soul. So that when Lord God the Holy Spirit searches the scriptures, you shall make you to learn the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And our Lord also prayed for us, sanctify them by the truth. And what is the truth? Thy word is the truth. What is that word? That word is nothing but the completed mind of Christ, which is Bible doctrine. And above all, we have for the pastor teachers the greatest mandate of all time. Caruso Thon Lagan, herald the word. Herald the word is the right designation rather than to preach the word. Herald what? Tell them the truth. And the diamond from our witness is what we are going to have, the indwelling trinity, followed by the Bible in our hands, the each and every word having communicated to the Lord or not, and the believers being our hearers, are our witnesses. If there are no witnesses, need not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our truth? Our work and the duty is to rightly divide that word of truth by faithful preparation in God's word. And that is what you and I have been kept alive with the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher with God's plan to be communicated. And if you are not here to communicate that God's plan, then you are the most wretched creature of all time. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.